Okay, hello everyone. My name is Rafael Lima, and in my presentation today, I will tell you how uh, LibreOffice Calc can now save server settings to the file. I will also tell you about a few more improvements that I have been making to the server, and a few other plans that I, uh, a few other features that I plan to implement in the server for possibly the next release cycle. So first of all, uh, for all of you, if you don't know me, I am a professor at the Federal University of Technology in Paraná, Brazil. Uh, I teach, I do not teach computer science. I work for the industrial engineering department where I am responsible for the subjects of operations research. So therefore my interest in the solver. I also teach uh, statistical process control and also uh, other subjects such as logistics and production planning. So I also do research using uh, about machine learning, so how we can use machine learning in uh, areas of industrial engineering. Uh, and also that's, that's why I have some interest in macros and Python and all this stuff. And I have been a LibreOffice uh, contributor since 2020 and a TDF member since 2021. So uh, here's an outline of my presentation. First, I will start uh, talking about why the solver matters. Uh, and then I'll move on to uh, explaining what the problem is about not saving the solver models. Then I will address the bug 38948, which was the bug that we were, where we were discussing this issue. Uh, then I will uh, talk about some ideas that I had to fix the problem. And then I will describe uh, what was the actual fix that got implemented. Uh, to finalize, I will, I will present some limitations that we have, and then I will uh, list some other improvements that I plan to implement for the solver. So why the solver matters? So the solver is uh, largely used in universities, both for teaching and also uh, by companies to optimize uh, real, real problems. So universities, we use linear and nonlinear mo models, both for teaching and also for research. And in organizations, many real world problems are modeled using a linear and nonlinear optimization uh, languages. So some examples are, so we have production planning models, production scheduling, we have lot size problems, transportation problems, facility location, and vehicle routing problems, just to name a few. So in companies, it's usual to have, uh, we have some spreadsheets where someone has already set up the model so that the users can only input the data and run the model to get the optimized solution. So one, one important thing about the solver in LibreOffice is that we offer very good uh, solver engines, uh, especially for linear programming models. So we offer out of the box LP Solve and also CoinMP, which are very good solvers, and they are far superior to the, of, to the, the options that Microsoft Excel uh, offers. So if we use uh, Microsoft Excel as an example, their solver is limited to 200 decision variables, which is a small amount if you compare to the complexity of real uh, world uh, problems that we need to optimize with solvers. So 200 decision variables is too few. And uh, in LibreOffice, the solvers that we offer have no limitation. The only limitation is the model complexity, which is not uh, something that LibreOffice uh, would be to blame in this case. It's just the model that might be too complicated. So we have very good options. We also have uh, nonlinear solvers, en nonlinear engine solvers that are good enough. Uh, they're compatible or competitive with other options that are available in other offices, office suits. So this is one important aspect that we need to emphasize when it comes to solver in LibreOffice. Our engines are very good. Uh, so, the, so why not saving this, the models to the file is a problem. Uh, so in the university, one common problem is we teach a lecture or we 
maybe we give a test to the students so they have to prepare a model, save the file and hand it to the teacher so then we can um, give uh, grades to these files. And not saving the solver model to the file defeats this purpose. So it's, so it's impossible to use the solver for this use case. So this is my pain because I am a professor. So I have this exact, this exact problem. But I've seen uh, companies have the same problem because in companies, when they want to use the solver, they have to save it to the file so that they do not have to prepare the file every time uh, to have things more automated. So I have, I have here a few screenshots of many uh, requests in Bugzilla and also questions in Ask LibreOffice uh, where users complain about the lack of saving the solver settings in LibreOffice. Uh, I, I just want to share an experience that I had because uh, in my university, uh, originally, we only, we only had LibreOffice as our office suit in the entire university. But we had some professors that were pushing the university into buying Microsoft Office licenses. And uh, the lack of saving solver settings to the file, this, this item was one of the excuses that were in the report to, pu to push the administration to buy LibreOffice, uh, Microsoft licenses. So this was said because I was basically forced to use uh, Microsoft Excel Solver uh, for my operations research lectures up to now. So because now uh, it's possible, finally possible to save Solver settings. So uh, now let's discuss a little about the bug, bug 38948, which was the bug report that concentrated the, the discussions and proposed solutions for this issue. So it was quite popular, but not so much. It was reported a long time ago in 2011. It, have, it had four duplicates and 16 people copied on this bug report. And basically, people complained about two main issues. First, the lack of saving support, and two, uh, the, the need for compatibility with Excel files because it is expected that if a user creates a file in Excel with a solver model, it should be imported in LibreOffice and vice versa. So uh, in the bug ticket, many proposed solutions emerged. So first, uh, we discussed, uh, there, there were some discussions about the need to change ODF specifications to accommodate for solver settings. But this sounded too complicated. And to be honest, at the time, I, I think I wouldn't be able to do that. Uh, what people did so, uh, to, to, uh, to go around this issue, uh, what other users did was create, create software models using macros. Because it is possible to create a macro that run a solver model. So you can use the solver service and then you can create a macro and save the macro into the file. So then you are basically saving the solver model to the file, but in a very complicated manner because uh, the macro is a bit complicated. Even for our simple models, the macro is very extensive. So I have a few examples. I'm not going to show them here, but if anyone is interested, I can show them to you. So this is what most people did uh, to save models to the file. Then uh, my first idea, uh, instead of uh, extending the ODF, mo the OD the ODF format, uh, my first idea was to propose an extension that would automate the creation of these macros. So this would make it easier to create the macros and then save them to the file. I also uh, thought about creating a separate dialogue using the basic IDE uh, to recreate the solver dialog and then save solver settings as an XML file inside the ODS file, which sounds complicated enough. So all these ideas were running through my mind. Uh, I never actually implemented any of these, on, only the, the macro uh, variant here I did implement, but uh, one, one day, I was uh, working on a, a, an Excel file in LibreOffice, 
And by chance, I opened the Manage Names dialog. And then I saw this. I don't, I don't know if it's possible for you to see, but if you take a look at the named ranges that are here, you notice that they are indeed uh, the description of the solver model. But in Excel, I remember not, I remember not creating these named ranges. So then I realized that uh, in Excel, the solver model is saved using named ranges. And this was a realization that I had that showed me the way uh, of how I should implement this in LibreOffice as well. I don't know if you know this, but in Microsoft Excel, the solver is an extension. And this is how they implemented it. Because uh, along the way, I started realizing that many other extensions in Microsoft Excel use named ranges to store information in files. So uh, here's just an excerpt of the workbook.xml file from an Excel uh, spreadsheet that has a solver model. So you see that here we have, uh, we have a lot of defined names, which is what they call it in Excel, for each of the settings uh, of a solver model. So one thing to note here is that in Excel, each tab has its own solver model. So we can have separate uh, multiple models in the same file. So what I did is uh, I mapped what named ranges corresponded to each uh, portion of the solver dialog. So it's quite simple actually. So we have uh, in the solver dialog from Excel, we have the named range that stored that information. So what I did was basically figuring out uh, what, was the, 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 what was the meaning of all the values that they used for each of the settings in the solver. And then I uh, basically created the mapping mechanism be between what was done here to the named ranges that were imported in LibreOffice. So uh, let me go back just a bit because so why did I do it like that? So first, uh, I figured that the, because we have already named ranges support in LibreOffice, if I simply used named ranges as well, then we would automatically gain import and export support. And also, if I used the same standard as Microsoft Excel uses for their solver models, then we would gain automatically uh, important uh, interoperability support between LibreOffice and Excel. So this is why I chose this path. So here's just uh, an overview of the patch. So here's the link for the patch. It has been merged uh, some time ago. I believe it was in March. Uh, so this is just an overview of what was done. So first here, uh, we have the doc shell files because originally the solver settings in LibreOffice were stored here because we only allowed for one solver settings per file. So I removed it from here and placed it in the table file because now we can have uh, one set of solver settings per tab. Uh, and also the other files, so here, are the solver dialog files where we basically load and save uh, and update the solver settings uh, from the dialog to the object that stores the solver settings. And here is the implementation of the solver settings class, which is repo responsible for storing, to actually store the solver settings. So just, just to describe how it works, it's very simple. Uh, so in the SC table class, now we have a get solver settings method that returns a solver settings object if it hasn't been still created. So with this method, we can get access to the solver settings that are defined for that tab. So how does it work? Okay, so here we have a more detailed explanation. So when the user opens the dialog, first uh, the get solver settings method checks if uh, the solver settings have already been read from the file. So what does it mean to read the settings? 
it means read the named ranges and convert them to the solver settings object. So if it has been read already, uh, it hasn't been ready, sorry, if it hasn't been read already, then it is read. If not, it, does, it simply does nothing. And after the, the dialog is closed, so the, the user changes the settings, and when the, the dialog is closed, the solver settings object is updated. Uh, yeah, so this is here. Okay, so the, when the user closes the dialog, the, the solver setting object is updated. So uh, the patch goes on like that. It's very simple, actually, because after uh, I realized what portions of the solver dialog correspond to each named range, so the patch is now an effort of mapping which portions of the solver dialog correspond to each named range. So here we have in this upper part, we have the main solver settings, which are settings that are available for all models. And here we have, in the uh, par part below, we have the, those settings that are solver engine dependent, because not all of these settings are available to all solver engines. So I added all of them here, but not necessarily all of them will be available for all solver models, okay? So an important thing is that this part on the left are the names that are used internally by the LibreOffice solver service. And these are the named ranges used when importing and exporting the, the file. So, uh, well, uh, the main thing about this patch is that it's led to many other improvements that are required to make the solver in LibreOffice Calc very competitive. The first of them is the need for support for hidden named ranges. So as I said earlier, uh, when I first imported an Excel file with a, a solver model, and then I realized that all solver settings were stored using named ranges, I first realized that they were actually being stored in hidden named ranges, because in Excel, they aren't, it's not possible to see them in the user interface. But in, in LibreOffice Calc, we were capable of seeing them, which is actually an interoperability problem, because if uh, in Excel, a user creates a hidden uh, range, named range, we should hide them in LibreOffice Calc as well. So I created uh, this, uh, actually this bug report, and also I have already submitted a patch that adds support for hidden named ranges in LibreOffice Calc as well. So with this patch, it's now possible to uh, import hidden named ranges uh, from Excel and also from LibreOffice Calc as well, and also export. So it's important for interoperability because if in Excel or in LibreOffice Calc we have to, ha we want to have a, a range, a named range that is hidden for, from the user, we should be able to do so and import and export should work as expected. So just as an example, with the patch that is proposed here, which is, by the way, not only because of the solver, but actually for named ranges. Uh, so with this patch here, I'm gonna zoom in, zoom in a bit so you can see better. It's possible now to run a script like this. With this script, it's possible to hide a named range and then show the named range back, which is similar to what Microsoft Excel does. Because in Excel, it's only possible to show or hide a uh, named range via scripting, which is, uh, I think it's by design because it's only made, meant for extension developers to use this, not for regular users. That's why uh, you won't find anywhere in Excel's user interface an option to show or hide hidden named ranges. And uh, from this patch that I proposed, it's only possible to show or hide named ranges uh, via scripting. 
So this patch is, is still under review, okay? So if any of you are willing to uh, review this patch, I would, be, I would be very thankful because it's wait, awaiting review for some time now. So it's in Jared, it's from, from my end it's working. And uh, I have a few other improvements that I would like to do to the solver. So first, I would like to work on the solver dialog user interface because I don't think that our user interface is very, is very good, especially for large models. For example, here uh, on the left, we have our user interface. And uh, if we have a model that has like 10, 12 uh, constraints, it's really hard to navigate through these constraints using uh, a portion of the, the dialogue that only supports four constraints. So it's not nice if you want to see the whole model. Whereas in Excel's UI, we have something a bit, uh, which I consider a bit better, not, not ideal, because here you can see more constraints in a smaller space. What I propose to do here is to have a tree view with three columns. So we can have the, we can have the column headers, then we can have the left uh, hand side, the operator, and then the right hand side of the constraints. I would like to propose to, in this portion of the dialogue, to allow the users to add separate um, objective cells to, to the model. Because both LibreOffice and Excel expect the user to select a range, then press comma, and then select another range, then press comma, and so on. Which is very annoying, because if you make a mistake, you, you have to start over. Uh, so what I will propose is to create a way where you can add each range separately, one at once. So you can have multiple objective cells ranges, but each entered individually. So these are a few improvements that I would like to do to the UI. Uh, also, a few more improvements that are still needed is first, improve scripting support because the current scripting support does not allow for us to uh, create a script that adds the solver model to the file, which I believe can be done by creating a recordable Uno command. So this is something that I, uh, I'm still planning on working, but I haven't started yet. Also, uh, this is one thing that is quite easy to do because uh, uh, both uh, linear solvers that we support, LP Solve and CoinMP, they support a lot more parameters than we, are, than we provide. So these parameters that the solver engines already support are easy to integrate in our solver implementations. So it, this is something that is easy to do, uh, and this will increase compatibility with Excel Solver. So uh, it would be better for interoperability as well. For, for instance, our solver does not support a, a very important parameter, which is the MIP MIP gap, which is probably the most important parameter that defines how much of gap do you need to achieve to say that a solution is optimal. And this is something that we still do not support. Well, in the future, but now uh, I, this uh, is something that is more to the future, I would like to integrate other solvers to, to, to Calc because we have some very important solvers that are Gurabi and Ciplex, that are the industry standard. They are proprietary, but they offer uh, C++ headers. So it would be possible to create an implementation of the solver service for these engines. And because they are proprietary, we would need to allow the user to define a solver license so that they can run. So if the user has, for example, Gurabi, Gurabi installed, they can set, set up where the license file is and then run it from within LibreOffice, which would be very good if we compare to other alternatives that exist today. So I believe that with these, these improvements, uh, the solver in LibreOffice would become the best alternative 
uh, among all the spreadsheet-based solvers. There are also other nonlinear solvers that can be introduced to LibreOffice, for example, IO, IPOPT, BoneMin, and CoWin, which are all open, open source solvers. So we could also implement them into LibreOffice. And to finalize, I think that we should improve documentation, better describe uh, what's, what our solver engines are, how they are configured, what the parameters are. So this should be available in the help pages. And finally, uh, a few limitations. Okay, so for LibreOffice 7.6, uh, the hidden named ranges are still visible, but the patch that I proposed will probably only be available for 24.2, so this will be fixed. Uh, also, there is a problem that I discovered this week while preparing the, the presentation, is that when you have a named range from Excel and it's tied to a tab instead of the whole document, when you save the file again, it gets lost. So it's a compatibility problem. I reported this bug in Bugzilla already and it has been confirmed. So this is something that needs to be worked on. And as I mentioned, another limitation is that not all parameters that exist in Excel are already supported in LibreOffice Calc. But this is something that can be easily worked on in the future. So uh, that's it. I'd like to thank TDF for the support, for the funding, for me to attend the conference, and also for everything else that TDF does, which is amazing. I also would like to thank the code reviews. So we have Thomas, we have Arkady, you know, I can say his name, but I'd like to thank Arkady and also Michael Mix because all of them were involved with uh, reviewing, reviewing the patch. So that's it, thank you. Thank <laughs> you.